So that's all there is really with discrete probability. It's just a lot of practice. Um, it's good to expose yourself to a variety of question types. Like this is a really tough question. Um, and, you know, I don't think I've um, seen anything like this outside of Vika. Um, so yeah, very good question to do there. Okay, so let's now talk about binomial distributions um, and Bernoulli sequences. So what is a Bernoulli sequence or what even is a binomial distribution? So by meaning two. Um, so a Bernoulli sequence follows this thing known as a binomial distribution, but I'll talk about that in a bit. Let's sort of focus on Bernoulli sequences. So a Bernoulli sequence has a certain rule, right? So any Bernoulli sequence has two outcomes, right? And we can define these outcomes as a success or a failure. For example, let's say I flip a coin, right? And let's say I said getting tails is success and getting a heads on the coin is failure, right? So you two distinct outcomes, I can easily define them as successes or failures, right? And every time I flip that coin, the probability is the same. Every trial needs to have a constant probability. And each failure is also a constant probability. So coin is really good for this because regardless of the number of times I flip that coin, that probability isn't going to change, hopefully. And these trials must also be independent. So the probability of the first trial must not affect the probability of the second trial. Um, this is quite a like, sort of, you know, a, a lot of conditions to meet, but um, they're, you know, nice conditions to have because they let us uh, like put in place a pattern more or less. Um, like I said, a sequence of coin tosses with each head is a success or, you know, and each toss is independent, right? So multiple Bernoulli sequences allow us to build what's known as a binomial distribution. So, um, you know, if X is the number of successes in a Bernoulli sequence um, with a fixed success of probability P, then we call that sequence a binomial random variable. Binomial, again, meaning two possible outcomes. And a binomial random variable will have a binomial distribution. So we always write out these binomial random values as follow, right? So we write X and then we write that squiggly line, um, BI for the binomial. And then we always write the number of trials first represented by N comma P. And these are two important variables when it comes to working out the binomial distribution. Um, the order doesn't matter in which these events occur because right? they're all independent from each other. So the order doesn't matter. And so we use this thing known as combinations or combinatorics, right? Um, combinatorics, sorry. Um, so combinations, how do we do them? We, well, we do them with this thing called a factorial. So n factorial is given by n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on until it equals 1. For example, the factorial of 4 is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, 0 factorial is equal to 1. So that's why it's not included here. So combinations don't actually care about order, right? So it's shown as NCR, so number of people to choose from possible groups, right? So for example, if I want to choose three people from this lecture, how many groups can I choose? I'll let you guys sort of figure this out. Um, maybe you've done um, this sort of stuff before. If you haven't seen it before, that's all good. So if you're entirely lost right now, that's fine. I'm going to go through that. Um, so let's look at this. So 10 people. Um, touch on when they board a tram and four are caught. How many different combinations of people are possible? So we're going to say that the number of people, right, possible are 10, right? And the groups are four, right? So four of these, so I'm choosing four from 10. How many ways can I choose four from 10? That's what this is asking, right? So you read this as 10 choose four. So see if it choose. So I just, do, I just chuck it into the equation. So 10 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 10 minus 4 factorial. Um, and so that's just this. Now, if you leave things in factorials, you can cancel them out. So 10 times 9 times 8 times 6 factorial. So then these 6 factorials can cancel out. And so you're left with 10 times 9 times 8 divided by 4 times 3 times 2. So it's always good to cancel out where you can. So um, the 4 and the 2 are going to cancel out with the 8. And the 3 and the 9 are going to cancel out to make 3, so it's just 10 times 3, which is equal to 30. And so we can put this all together with probability to form the binomial formula, right? Where x tells you the number of successes you have, p is the probability of success, and n is the number of trials, okay? So this reads basically as, um, you know, number of, number of successes given n number of trials, 
times the probability of successes times the probability of no successes, right? This here is the number of times, so it's n minus x, right? Which is the number of times, the number of failures. Right, and this only works because each event is independent. So what's happening is like, you know, the, the first, like, you know, I, for example, in five, I get four successes. So then I have to do the probability of success times one, times two, times three, like times four, right? Like um, success once and twice and three and four, right? Hence they multiply, if that makes sense, because it's and, right? And I also multiply by the chance of one failure. So it's one minus P once, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, which is why it simplifies to be like five C4 P to the power um, four times one minus P to the power five minus four, right? Let's do a question. So um, let's say, you know, Dr. Strange found that Iron Man has a 90% chance of dying over all possible timelines. Let's say we take 10 random timelines. What is the probability that Iron Man dies in every timeline? And what is the probability he dies in a half? Um, I'll give you guys some time to think about it. Have a, have a pause, maybe. Um, see how you go. Um, but in the meantime, I'll work it out. So generally, my first step, let me just quickly have some water. My first step, generally, is to set up my variable, right? And so I'm going to write, the, the reason I do this, by the way, is so then I have all the val values I need in a nice small package, as opposed to a slab of text. The only two things I really need, apart from this Iron Man garbage, well, I don't need the Iron Man garbage, sorry. What I do need is the 0.9 from the 90% chance. So the probability of dying is 0.9. That's what we've defined as a success, right? That Because we're trying to find when Iron Man dies, right? So the probability of death is success. Sometimes the probability that they give you is not the probability of a success. So you've got to be really careful with that, right? And then we want to take 10 random variables and so n is equal to 10, okay? So um, we have x is binomially distributed with n is equal to 10, with probability 0.9. So let's say we want to work out the probability he dies in, in 10 random timelines. Again, order doesn't matter here. It doesn't matter in what order he dies or in which order of timelines checked he dies just it needs to matter that it happens, you know, out of the 10 times it happens five, or, you know, um, he dies in half, right? that's what we're working out first. So x is equal to five out of 10, that's, that's half. This is just um, 10 choose five, right? It's the same thing as a factor, like with the combinations. Um, so I subs that into my NCR equation. Um, I'm calling it an NCR equation because it's like this, right? Um, and then I, you know, sub everything else into my binomial equation. And I get 0 0.001 to three decimal places. Now, um, since this is, this didn't really ask for any decimal places, it's probably better to just give it as an exact value. Okay. Um, now let's go to a new question. We, again, we take 10 random timelines. What is the probability that Iron Man died? Well, also, I forgot to talk about what is the probability that Iron Man dies in every timeline? In this case, you do probability of x is equal to 10, right? So 10 by 10 times 0 0.9 to the power 10. Um, and here it's 0 0.1 times 10 right, to, the, to the power 10 minus 10, which just cancels out, right? Now, if we go back to our formula for NCR, um, like here, sorry, if I have two of the same numbers, so if, it, if it's got 10 choose 10, well, by common sense, there's only one possible way to choose 10 choose 10, right? I just need to choose all of them. I can show that mathematically by this. So 10 factorial divided by 10 factorial times 10 times minus 10 factorial. And that's just equal to one because these cancel out. That's equal to zero and zero factorial is equal to one, right? Um, sorry, I went back a little bit. And so really, this is just equal to x is equal to 10, or dies in all timelines, is just equal to 0 0.9 to the power 10, which is the same as saying he dies in timeline 1, and dies in timeline 2, and dies in timeline 3, and so on, right? I've just multiplied 0 0.9 by 10. 0 0.9 by itself 10 times. Cool. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, 
So we take 10 random timelines. What is the probability that Iron Man dies in less than two timelines? So again, I want to write out what my variable is, right? And now I've got the probability of x is less than two, right? This is also the same as the probability of x is less than or equal to one, because it's a discrete sort of distribution. Remember, binomial is discrete. So keep that in mind, so discrete, right? So the probability of x is less than one, um, which is also just equal to the probability of x is equal to zero plus x is equal to one. We can't have less than um, zero in this case, right? It, it doesn't make sense for him to die in negative one timelines. And now I just sub that into my binomial equation, right? Um, and this works out probability of x is equal to zero. And then I can work out probability of x is equal to one separately. And then from there, I sum them together, right? And that gives me my um, wanted value there. It's here, by the way. Okay. Um, what is the probability that he dies in at least one? So the probability of x is greater than or equal to one, so at least one. Again, same thing. Um, so there's two ways to do this question. Um, one is to add everything from one to 10, right? Um, but since we know all these outcomes, since it's just a probability distribution must sum to one, we can just do the complement. So I can do um, the probability of x is less than one and do one minus of that, right? So this is just the complement of each other, right? It's a complement. Um, and, you know, the probability is x is less than one is just equal to the probability that x is equal to zero, right? Because it's discrete. And so that's where I get this from. And I worked out what x is equal to zero was from the previous slide. And this is basically just zero, right? Which is why we get 1.000 to four decimal places. Okay, so the binomial distribution has a different formula for mean and variance. Um, and so this is as follows. Um, and also for yeah, so for the mean, it's just the number of um, trials times the probability of that trial, which is quite nice, right? Um, it makes sense if you think about flipping a coin as well, right? The probability of flipping a coin is 0.5. Let's say I flip a coin um, uh, maybe like five times, so n is equal to five. The probability that I get tails is just going to be, you know, the probability of 0.5 times five, right? Half of the times so I'm going to get tails. So two and a half times I should be getting tails, which is kind of iffy, I guess, with a discrete um, sort of distribution. So that's either problem. It's probably better to just round up to three. To three. Um, for binomial distributions, the formula for variance is just NP times one minus P. So the, the expected variable or the expected value times the probability of the complement, more or less, right? Um, Again, remember that um, the variance is equal to the standard deviation squared. Um, and so if I want to work out standard deviation, right, that's just equal to NP times one minus P, the square root of that, right? So these are quite important to know. They will get you to calculate this sort of stuff. So try not to get this confused with just normal discrete um, formulas. Um, it does follow an entirely different rule. So. There are two main calculator functions. Um, so the binomial probability density function, or PDF, um, is given, which gives you like a particular x value. So if, if I've got, you know, the probability of x is equal to two, that's when I want to use a PDF, right? If you're not sure where this is on your CAS, um, Google is probably your best bet. Um, I'm not sure what CAS everyone uses. I use the TI Inspire. So if you do use a TI Inspire, it's, you know, go into the menu and then um, under probability. And if you scroll down, you'll find binomial, I think. And then from binomial, you can find binomial PDF. And just pressing that in and filling out the, the information page that comes up will just give you the value. Um, binomial CDF, cumulative density function, as it says is cumulative, it sums up, right? It sums up multiple terms. So um, it'll, it'll generally do things that are like greater than or less than or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. And you don't really have to worry about the, um, you don't have to worry about converting things like x is less than one to probability of x is equal to zero. It'll just do it for you, right? So just write it in as the question says, 
um, simply because you won't make a mistake doing this conversion. You, you're not gonna like if you do that conversion by hand, you might make a mistake, but it's super unlikely that you make that conversion mistake when you're doing it just entering into the calculator because the calculator just calculates it for you. Okay, let's talk a bit about the probabilities of the mean and the variance. So the expectation allow us to work with mean and variance of a random variable without rewriting the distribution, right? So what do I mean by that? So if I have, you know, some new distribution, right, but it's only multiplied, you know, it's like some scalar multiple plus some constant, I can just use the old mean and continue on. Right. So sometimes this is a really common question type. Um, they'll like give you um, some X term and then they'll say, let's double that X term. Right. And then add B to it or add some value to it. If you want to calculate that out, just sort of use this rule here. Um, with the variance, it's a little bit complicated. Um, the B just disappears. Right. And the A comes out the front and gets squared. And same as A squared times the variance of X. Um, so the variance has no horizontal translation. I'll give you guys some time to think about this. Um, drop your answer in chat or, or your guess. Obviously, the, you know, there's, there's no um, penalty for getting the wrong answer. Um, this is a good idea to sort of brainstorm as to why variance could have no horizontal translation.